In this video, we're going to start to take a look at how data is handled inside of an assembly file. So I want to get you some intuition behind how different variables look when they're declared, how those variables are loaded, and also general protections that are seen when we deal with pointer-based data, things like stack canaries that could interfere with your ability to build exploits. So let's start off with a really simple example. If I were to declare a few variables in this file, so say I have like an int a equals 5, and then maybe I have an... I don't know what int b equals 6, and then maybe int c equals a plus b. Just some really basic usages of some variables. If I were to compile this file, and if I were to load it into Ghidra, we could take a look at how those variables are actually being stored inside of this binary. So we can just go through and do like the typical analyze on this, and then I'm going to go over to my main. And inside of the main, we can take a look at the variables that we have. Now you'll see here that generally when we're taking a look at these variables, it's pretty easy to pick out the integer values that we have. So we had the values five and six. And when we look here, we can see these being loaded right here. Five and six are being loaded into different locations. In this case, RBP plus local 14 and RBP plus local 10. The reason why they're being loaded into memory like this is because this is the location where local variables for a function are typically loaded. So right now we have two variables, one with the value five and one with the value six. Now we wanna add these values together. To be able to add the values together, we have to move them from memory into registers. That's because we can only really do addition operations and operations similar to that using values that are inside of registers. So what's going to happen is we're going to move these values into registers, in this case EDX and EAX. We then do the operation of adding them together, and then you'll see here that it actually stores them back into the stack memory. And this is because we stored that result in this variable C. So you can see that it actually puts it back onto the stack because it's storing it as a local variable. And then this last part here is of course just moving a zero and then it's returning the value to return zero. Now something that's interesting about this code is that you can see that actually Ghidra doesn't give us the C code associated with this. It doesn't actually parse out these different variable declarations. So this is why it's useful to be able to understand these variable declarations because sometimes Ghidra might not be able to handle them. So that was a really simple example. Let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna declare some pointer values. So A equals five, and then I'll have B point to the address of A. And of course we'll do something like this. Now in this sort of situation, we can take a look at what happens when we actually work with pointer based data. So I've compiled that binary. I'm gonna drag it into Ghidra. And uh, we'll just call this like start two as an example. And again, we'll go through the same sort of analyze that we usually do, and we'll go over to our main function here. Now in the main function, you're gonna notice some interesting things happening now that we have pointers associated with this actual code. For one, you're gonna see that Ghidra actually does give us some code this time around, but you're gonna see that there's some things that don't seem similar to the code that we had. For one, there's this FS offset, there's this weird sort of stack check happening over here. And there's just a lot of like odd lines of code that have been added. Let me explain to you what exactly these are. Because we're accessing and working with memory, GCC is gonna do something really particular with this code. What it's doing is it's setting up something known as a stack canary, which is a type of protection that's used to try to prevent attackers from getting exploits like remote code execution to happen by adding data onto the stack. So you'll see that there's this setup here where we move something onto the stack, and then you'll see a setup later down here where we actually do the stack check fail to see if that data was overridden. And that's the general high level idea of what a stack canary is going to do. So when you see this sort of setup, it indicates to you that we're working with memory in some sort of way, in this case, using a pointer. Another important thing that we see here is this instruction here, which may seem a little bit weird if you're not too familiar with assembly code. Why are we XORing EAX with itself? The reason for this is because if you XOR a register with itself, you will get the result of zero every time. That's just generally the way that an exclusive OR works. If two things are the same, it gives it a value of zero, which will zero out the whole register. 
The reason why we do this is because it's actually faster than moving zero into the register. So whenever you are zeroing out a register, you'll typically see this XOR type of operation happening. So that's some context towards what that's doing. Now you may see in some cases we do move zero into a register. In this case, it's because we're actually setting a return status code. So in most cases, we might not be setting zero for this value. We might set one or two. So for that, GCC is going to set it up with a move operation rather than an XOR because it just makes more sense to move the value because it could be something that's not zero. But if it's always going to be zero, you're generally going to see this XOR operation instead. From here, things are pretty similar, right? So in this case, we are moving five into some location in memory. And then this LEA is load effective address. This is loading the address of the thing that we're pointing to into a variable. In this case, it goes into RIX. So RIX is being set with the value of, you know, the local 1C address. This is generally the way that pointers work. And if you have some intuition behind C pointers, this should make a lot of sense, right? We're just loading the address of memory into the register, which is why we're seeing this LEA operation. So when you see LEA, it typically indicates that we're loading a pointer. And you can see that very clearly in the C code here. So this is generally the way that pointers are gonna be presented inside of code. So with that, you now have a better intuition behind how these different variables are represented in code, things like pointers, just basic like variable types. And this should help you with being able to apply to really any sort of variable types that you see. So this should get you a good intuition behind variables. So thanks so much for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to dive a bit more into things like decision structures. And with that understood, we're going to be able to take a look at things like patching binaries to be able to bypass conditions and that sort of fun stuff. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.